I took a day tour to the Genting Highlands and I was a little worried because they gave us four hours to explore it. And my impression was that it was mostly an indoor shopping mall, kind of some, uh, there's a casino, there are some outlets and apparently everyone runs to the outlets and they are literally like the same stores that you'd see all over America. And there are, there's actually a, an outdoor amusement park, an indoor amusement park, and I didn't want to do any of those things. And they're actually kind of expensive, but it turned out I had a really great time. This is my crazy lunch, which was delicious. And after lunch, I explored a little bit of the crazy kind of Times Square-ish area. And then I took the cable car down and saw the temple. Coming to you from the cable car at Genting Highlands. And on the way up, we went through the clouds and I was kind of scared because you can't see anything but the clouds. And I thought, as long as I'm not alone, because there were other people in the car with me. And now I am. <laughs> but it's less windy now, so that's good. But it's still weird to see nothing but clouds and other cable cars as they pass by. So the first thing that struck me about the temple is there's a Netflix show called The Legends of the Monkey and a Monkey King and coming here there's a whole story about the legend of the Monkey King so I was like oh maybe this is based on reality. <laughs> The other amusing thing is there are all these figurines and sculptures that kind of depict these layers of hell. And if I followed correctly, it's a place to bring your kids to make sure that they grow up and that they are well behaved. It reminded me a little bit about an even more scary version of the Struvenpeter, which is a German version of kids misbehaving and teaching them to be behave, better behaved. As you can see, the views are stunning and I enjoy just wandering around. I think I spent about two hours wandering around here. That's how they do it? <laughs> <laughs> Quite simple, I tell you. Wait, wait, wait a second. That's the how so the baby's gonna come out of the Yeah, I think I think it'll lay egg slides over there and yeah. then the baby just has yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh wow. I've never seen that before. Oh, what's he gonna do? Eat oh he'll eat it. Oh. Or maybe he eats the shell and then the baby's eating. And the baby's out, yeah. Oh. oh. Look, look, look. why can't you capture the video? Yeah. Oh. Can... oh my goodness. Huh? Taylor, let's now now. You're kidding. What does he do? What does he do? Oh, baby, he, he, he takes the it baby out of it. No, no, no. <gasps> he takes it and puts it into the. Because it just leaks. No, he puts it in the water. Look at it. It's leaking something. Yeah. yeah. Put it in the water, my boy. You know, there's a baby. Oh, oh thank oh, God. Oh. Well, okay, now the, there's an opening. Yeah, so I think he made a concert just for the opening thing. Is he calling to his baby? Come on, son, or come on, daughter, <laughs> is the egg moving? Is it little? Yeah, it is. Wow. Come on, baby, we're rooting for you. Well, doesn't anybody come out and, like, cheer on? Yeah. <laughs> How's the baby going to know which one's its mother? Oh, I think they're gonna create more babies there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's busy with that. Yeah. So I asked somebody else if what I saw was okay, and they said it was perfectly normal, and the baby had a 50 50 chance of making it. get here and it's stunningly beautiful and amazing and you can't believe how they might have built it and then you get completely distracted by the monkeys
This became my favorite coffee shop in Bukit Bintang. And here are just a few of the items that I ate, all of which were delicious. I'm here at Fika Coffee, yes, right? <laughs> My name is Bilal from India. <laughs> I long time working here with my best friend, uh, oh. my manager also. He has a good heart. Yes. Haider also very, very good, you know, very, very good. Uh, good heart uh, from Haider. Haider is uh, coming here. Yes, uh, but Haider is living uh, from here, but uh, we are. Happy yeah. <laughs> you can see these guys are great and I've come back here for breakfast most mornings. The breakfast is fabulous. Thank and you, as you see, yes. <laughs> these guys are great. I highly, highly recommend coming here if you end up coming to Kuala Lumpur. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As a full-time traveler, you're going to have to do a lot of laundry. And typically, wherever you're staying is, if they have laundry, it will be quite expensive. So you're going to have to find the laundromat. So I'm actually doing my laundry right now. Meter taxis tend to be more expensive than Grab, but show up faster. If you do take one, make sure to negotiate a good price, which you can do by checking the Grab fare first. If you get a Digi SIM card and like me were unable to use their app to top up your SIM card, you can just come into one of their stores and do it right there. Here in Bukit Bintang, there are a lot of food options. Uh, some of them are more commercial for tourists, so I'm trying one that looks a little less touristy. Of course, the downside is I'm not quite sure what I'm eating, but it looks like dim sum, so I'm gonna check it out. You'll need to always carry around a bit of cash with you because places like this don't take credit cards. I've also found Visa more widely accepted than American Express. I just realized they had fresh coconut. Crossing streets in Kuala Lumpur and frankly most of Malaysia is kind of a go when there are no cars concept. Lights don't seem to mean much. You just go and follow other people and use them for cover at times when there isn't a traffic light. I'm back at Fika and this coffee looks amazing. It's their specialty. Let's talk about the underground. It's kind of confusing. There are two or three different lines and they don't always match up and you'll find that when you're, depending on where you're going, you may get really frustrated at having to change lines. And you should, if you're gonna use it, buy one of the uh, tap cards so that you can just fill her up and tap in and tap out, making the whole thing a little easier. This is my first time to Kuala Lumpur and as a full-time traveler, what I love is I'm not, worried about seeing all of the different sites. I just walk around and enjoy myself and don't have a firm plan. And in fact, my plan sometimes gets made when I meet somebody and they recommend somewhere I should go. Uh, I did take a free walking tour my first day here. It's quite a beautiful site. Some of the street art around Kuala Lumpur is stunning. As you can see, I'm not the only one to have this brilliant idea. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. If you come to Kuala Lumpur and are looking for this, it is a little lake behind, uh, I'm not sure if it's, I guess it's like right in between the two towers. And if you are outside the right entrance, then you are seeing this lake. If you're not seeing this lake, just walk through the towers to the other side and you will find it.
perfect way to end my stay in Kuala Lumpur. <laughs> a quick look at Kuala Lumpur by night. The view from my rooftop at the hotel I'm staying at is fabulous. I didn't try out the pool right there, <laughs> but what a stunning view. After a week in Kuala Lumpur, my takeaway is, should you come? Yes. Is it safe? Yes, absolutely. Obviously, don't go down quiet streets by yourself at night. Uh, do watch your handbags. I was told uh, that you should have them strapped around you and keep them away from oncoming traffic. Um, there are There's a reputation of motorbikes snatching purses. Thankfully, it didn't happen to me. Uh, I felt very, very safe uh, everywhere I went. Another surprising thing is I read that there were a lot of mosquitoes in Kuala Lumpur and I was nervous about that, but I didn't have any problems with mosquitoes either. Clearly a week in Kuala Lumpur, if you are not racing to see everything, is not enough time to actually get around to everything you can do in Kuala Lumpur. It is a wonderful place to be a full-time traveler and there's tons to do and also very easy to veg out especially in the afternoon heat to just pick a cafe and be mellow is a great way to spend your time as well for more videos about my time in malaysia check out my playlist about traveling in malaysia as well as my blog at heatherbegins.com